we are used to doing uh, OrthoView, uh, which is basically a digital templating system. But nevertheless, I will try my best to uh, show some basic concepts regarding uh, templating. To begin with, first of all, you need to make sure that you know you've got all the identification marks of patients, whether the, 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 you're templating for the right patient or not. That is very important. Whether you've got adequate X-rays or not, and how would you judge uh, whether the X-rays are adequate or not? Is looking looking at the pelvis, looking at the femur, and uh, uh, see whether you've got any magnification marker on the on the X-ray itself. Uh, unfortunately, on this X-ray, we don't have a magnification marker, so we don't know how much magnification factor we should be considering while judging with our with our, with our implants. Looking at uh, looking at the uh, X-ray itself, we look at uh, the pelvis itself. As you can see, one of the obturator foramen here and the second obturator foramen here. So they are not identical. So it means the X-ray is is not um, adequate. Um, you look at the pubic ramus, normally the pubic ramus should pass through, the line going through the pubic ramus should pass through the sacrum. And uh, you look at the lesser trochanters on the femur. Normally, they, if they are more than five millimeter in width, that means uh, basically the leg is externally rotated. While templating for hip orthoplasty, uh, you need to consider um, the neck shaft angle, you need to consider um, the antiversion of the femoral neck, so the leg should be ideally in 15 degrees internally rotated position. You look at the whole pathology surrounding uh, the patient, in this obviously we've got an intracapsular neck of femur fracture, the leg is completely externally rotated as you can see the lesser trochanter uh, as compared to the right hip. Um, you look at the osteophytes, particularly if you are planning for hepatoblasty, you look at the central osteophytes, whether you need to lean more centrally. Uh, you look at the metabolic bone disease, look at any dysplasia, any uh, uncoverage of the femoral head, whether there is any avascular necrosis of the femoral head or uh, any other metabolic bone disease. Once you have done that, then you mark your bony landmarks, which I am going to do now. So, you mark the obturator foramen here. That's your obturator foramen on the left side and obturator foramen on the right. Hmm? Hmm? Not oh, okay. oh, sorry, I was coming. Um, then you look at uh, the cubic ramus, basically the line going through the cubic ramus. So it's not facing towards the sacrum, so we know that this is not a... Uh, you mark the lesser trochanters. The teardrops, which you can see on the right, is adequate, while on the left I'm slightly lost here because it's just... I'll mark this as a teardrop. The supralateral margin of the acetabulum, the femoral head, the tip of the greater trochanter, and the other thing we need to look into is, is mark the center of the femoral canal. You take two fixed points, uh, so 1.6, so it's probably 0.8 here, so you take this, this is the center of femoral canal here. And another one just around the proximal aspect is 1.5, so 1.5 from there and mark the center of the femoral canal. Okay. Once you've marked the teardrops and the center of the femoral canal, you pass a line going through the two teardrops and you need to find out the leg length discrepancy between the two legs, the radiological leg length discrepancy. Well, what we can do is we find the trans teardrop line and we can find two fixed bony points around the lower border of 
mesotropanta or you can go on the proximal aspect or the middle aspect doesn't matter and you pass a line between the two mesotropantas so if you look at this around 6.2 millimeter here, centimeter and you go through the center here it's 2.3 so 6.2 minus 2.3 it's around 4 4 centimeter shortening on the left lower limb but you have to consider magnification on this as well so probably I would uh, multiply it by 0.8 which will be 3.2, so it's around 3.2 millimeter short. Yeah, 3.2 centimeter. Yeah. So once you have established the Legland discrepancy, um, you establish the center of rotation of the of of the hip, which we can do. Then which we can do in this patient particularly because on the left hip it's completely pathological I would do it on the on the normal side uh, you find out the center of rotation of the hip by first um, taking the acetabulum uh, into play this is I've got this trident hemispherical shell uh, templates which are normally used as well and if you look at this they've got uh, two lines, one solid line which is the lining of the shell itself and the, the dotted red line is mainly the hydroxy epitide coating which is given to the shell. So you put, uh, you try to establish what should be your size of the shell by placing your shell, by placing your template around the x-ray and this lower border of the of your template should correspond with the teardrop while the medial aspect should not go beyond the iliovestial line and you look at this one if you look at 42 we are quite far away from the suprolateral aspect of the of the acetabulum so 42 is undersized we look at 44 and you obviously are looking at inclination as well which should be 45 degrees so you're placing this 44 millimeter which again is I think is under size here and if you see 46 is getting there but still not maybe 48 so 48 if you look at that the teardrop the lower aspect of the shell corresponds with the teardrop it's not it is not medial to the iliostial line and it is just taking the superlateral aspect. However, there is a bit of over coverage of the shell, so probably I would say 48 shelf feels right. Although if you take the magnification in account, you were probably thinking in terms of for Ashish, either it will be a 46 or a 50 cup. I would say probably a 48 or a 46 cup in theater. If he's if he's going in, in like 54 or a 56 cup, it means he is oversizing. So this is just to give an, an idea what we are going to do in theatre. So once you have templated that, you put the center of rotation, which is normally marked here. So this is your center of rotation. So that's your center of rotation of of the hip, and you need we need to uh, basically find out now the center of rotation of this. This is the center of rotation of the acetabulum, and in uh, pathological hips, there will be cent different center of rotation for the femur, which which we can identify as well and see the difference in the leg lengths. Leg lengths. But in this one, I think the center of rotation, because it's a normal hip, the center of rotation of both the femur and the acetabulum corresponds with each other. Now looking at the 
templates for the fever itself. I have got only 37.5. So as Dr. Ashish has said, we've got various different stems, starting from 35 or maybe dysplastic stems, 37, 44, 50, 56. Look at uh, the off. So we need to reciprocate the horizontal offset, which corresponds with the offset of the patient, because that is very important for the biomechanics of the hip. So I'm going to try, because I've got limited offset stems, so I'm going to try 37, 5, one to begin with and you see you have to put in the the stem in this in the center of the femoral canal and and see where it stands and and then you have to try to reciprocate this with your center of rotation of the of of the hip itself so if you look at this this is center of rotation if you use a minus forehead center of rotation if you use a zero head and a center of rotation for the hip if you use a plus four head. So you normally don't want your center of rotation to be lateralized because that's going to create, uh, uh, that is probably unadvisable because you need to restore the normal biomechanics and the joint reaction forces and it can uh, lead to instability as well. So you're thinking about getting the center of rotation right here. So if the other thing is to see the best fit in, this, in, the, in the femoral canal itself, if you look at 37.5 number one, this is the outline, the red dotted outline is where your semen will be and the solid black background is where your stem would be. So I think 37.51 is slightly underfilled. 37.5 zero as you can see uh, let's see number two so that's 37.5 number two so you've tried to fit the stem best within the femoral canal and try to restrict your center of rotation which I think is quite good here because that is your center of rotation of the hip the center of rotation of the acetabulum as well as the center of rotation of the of the femoral stem with a zero head and the semen mantle is all around it's not encroaching on the endosteal bone the tip of the tip of the trochanter is marked here and then you mark the level of the shoulder Draw a line between the two and see how much subsidence is needed. So this is basically from the tip of the greater trochanter you are sinking your stem around the one centimeter. The neck cut is immaterial, but if you are doing an uncemented stem, then you measure the tip of the uh, from the tip of the lesser trochanter where your neck cut is going to be. Any questions? That's fine. So 48, I think Ashish, Dr. Ashish, 48 and uh, 37 number 2. 37 number 2? Yeah. But depends. <laughs> you can put a 40. So it uh, gives you insight into your, uh, the, into the bones, uh, looking at the floor, how far you are from the uh, uh, floor, where to go in, how uh, narrow your isthmus is. So looking at the bone all around, so that gives you more insight when you're actually doing the surgery. And it is a two-dimensional planning. So it's not three-dimensional planning, so keep that in mind when you're doing the surgery. So you don't have to stick to the size that you it's just you just give it, It's just given an idea. Yeah. But there are loads of studies which have shown that if you are your preoperative translating only corresponds with around 70 to 80 percent of what you implants you put in but if you in, if you uh, are templating a 46 or a 40 48 size trident shell 
and you're putting and, and you're reaming 54, it means you bought you are gone something wrong, right? If you if you're put, if you're templating a 48 and you're putting a 50, that means you're okay. If you're going undersizing or oversizing it too much, it means that uh, it's, it's similar. Like if you're doing a journey from A to B destination, it takes you two hours, and still four hours in your car, you're lost somewhere. You think you're not doing the justice here. You you need to find out what what's wrong. So exactly, it's the same thing. May I request to take your tables and uh, I will be distributing the X-rays again. The tilts the pelvis a little bit to the back. So you have to keep that in mind where you are putting your anterior retractor or posterior retractor. Yeah. Um, in the cup, um, what is most important is that you should be able to see all the margin. So uh, exposure gives you the best way of performing a good surgery. If you are struggling to see, don't just barge on dreaming. Make sure you can see the cup uh, all along. And that will make your life much more easier. So spend more time on exposure than on actually reaming. Because then you will actually not need to spend any time on reaming. So inferiorly you should be able to see the transverse vestibular ligament in the notch. So it's usually a rectangular or rhomboid basically. It's rhomboid structure. It has uh, inner margin, outer margin. So it's band-like thing which is uh, basically bridging the inferior notch. You'll find there's a lot of fat or osteophytes in the acetabular fossa. So uh, try to clear those so that you can actually see the floor of the acetabular. So once you can see the floor and the tail nicely and the margins, that's it. You, half your job is over, basically. So uh, what I do is I use a, a diathermy to actually take out the fat on this because sometimes there can be bleeders which can bleed a lot uh, if you haven't really burst them. So uh, if you're using a knife to take it out, make sure you burst those bleeders. Uh, otherwise, your field will be kind of not very good to see. It will keep on bleeding, it will keep on soaking, it will keep on coming. So make sure uh, you burst those or use the diaphragm to take on this fat pad from the uh, floor. So once you can see the TAL, the Three things that are important uh, in the cup are one is the center of the cup, how deep you want to go to the center, the floor, and the orientation of the cup. Orientation means inclination and antiversion. So antiversion I would normally keep along the transverse acetabular ligament that will give you your antiversion. So, you know, which way anterior posterior you rotate it. For the inclination, if your inferior margin of the reamer, and that will go same for the cup when you put in the cup, goes along the inner margin of the TAL, and you're not pushing up, you're just trying to remain here. Tendency is to keep going and push up in order to rein the cup. We don't need to do that. Our level of the inferior uh, part should remain at the TAL. Because if you push, you will end up taking your center of the cup higher. And that's what you don't want. Now, that you can only see after, like you're closed and done the X-ray, oh, this has gone up. But if in the ringing part, you remain vigilant, that you don't push up for the ringing. Sometimes there can be hard bone, and with that hard bone you really want to go and up. But try to, you can give a pressure from outer side to the inferiorly, like downwards, but not upwards. Okay? And once you do that, you keep on increasing your size. So, our TAL is this, yeah? Uh, it's a little bit tilted this pelvis anteriorly quite a lot actually. So we need to go along the TL margin and remain there. So you see, I'm not going up at all. I'm not touching with this reamer up at all. 
I forget about the roof, where the roof is. You don't have to go and rein the roof. You have to rein the inferior part till you reach the anterior posterior walls. And that's your final size. Okay? So let's go to the next so you said that you go downwards and then tilt your this uh, rim apart? Yeah. Go down and then, so, then tilt it. Yeah. Down. So tilt it to the inner margin of the rim apart. Go down like this and then tilt it. Yeah. Sir, how right direction, that 45 degree of how we are going anti-version, sir? Right, anti-version is your TL, where this margin is there. Yes, so sir. this is our anti-version. Yeah? Okay. So this is parallel to this anti-version. Okay. Inclination is this. Hmm. Yeah? It is 45 Anti-version is this. So in which direction? Inclination is a 40 degree. I usually take 40, not 45. Okay. But that's your choice. You can take 45. Okay. Uh, yeah. What is anti-version, sir? So in this way? Or in this way is anti-version. Anti and this way is inclination. Yeah. Suppose I want to give the 25 anti-version. So what will, how much it will go anti-version? Okay. Now anti-version varies quite a lot. Anti-version will go this way. This way. This yeah. way. Yeah. This okay. is retroversion. This is anti-version. Anti-version. Yeah. Front. So going to the front is anti-version. Going to the back is retroversion. So you must have some anti-version at least. Definitely not a retroverted curve. Yeah. So uh, this is about if you see in this plane about 20 degrees. Anti-version. Yeah. If you look up from the top, the angle between the this is like neutral line. So about 20 degrees and 15, 20 something like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So. Again, go and in. Again, you don't have to go from the smallest to the largest. That's another thing. Uh, if you are comfortable, uh, what, what size is this? 44. Okay, so you can start with the 44 to go on to your floor. Yes. To remove the container, don't you start from the small size and the small size? Yeah, that's if you want to go to the floor. You don't necessarily have to go to the floor. There will be some cups where there's a big distance between the floor and your uh, cup surface. You don't necessarily have to go to the floor. But if you want to go to the floor, then you can start with the first one and then reach the floor and then remove it. No. It used to be, but not anymore. What you need to consider is your total offset. Your femoral offset, acetabular offset. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you need a bleeding bone over there also. Yes. No. With the floor, you will find actual. Uh, central floor bone yeah. is not vascular. Is it not? It's not vascular. That, that, that's like uh, uh, quite a whitish looking structure. So your cancellous bone will be actually around it, not on it. So you need to go up to some Yeah. So it's your decision how deep you want to go. I only go as deep as the bleeding cancellous bone appears and that's all. I don't need to go to the floor. Even if the central part is not bleeding or the superior part is not yeah. bleeding? No, no, no. You have to have peripheral bone cancellous bleeding bone. Okay. But no, you don't have to reach the center for that. You said you started with the tab and then yes. the, the end point is the anterior, <coughs> anterior posterior diameter. Maybe yeah. this vertical diameter is slightly more, which at times I have... It doesn't point. matter. Vertical so you doesn't that matter. So un unscratched? It may sometimes be unscratched at the top, okay. outside. But that's okay, okay. because your main, you more than three-fourths of your top is actually in. So think about this plastic.
you might end up taking off your anterior posterior wall if you want to reach the top. As long as your anterior posterior So you can again see, I'm not going on the top, yeah? I'm just trying to remain at the level of the TA. And now you can give an anterior posterior push and see how much play is there. So we are nailing, I think, the next or next to next streamer will be enough for this, yeah? Because now there's about a millimeter of play anterior posterior. During this process, if the TL is scratched, if there is some problem? No, there is no problem. No TL problem. is not giving you stability. That's okay. But Even ideally, worn out some, uh, ideally your orientation is like that. The TL yes. is actually intact mm. and you are not behind mm. But if it gets scratched, that's okay. Yeah, that, that seems to be the size. So this is your final reamer. Make sure your final reamer, you are aiming in the direction where you want to put your thumb. Okay, so that's important. If you final reamer goes all the way around here, there, then your cup won't be fixed. So make sure the cavity you create at with the final reamer is where you want to go. So TL. So you can see the posterior superior margin of the reamer is a little bit out. And that gives you right indication you are in the right place. Note with your final reamer how much you are exposed at the top. And what is your relationship to the TAL with your final reamer. Because that's where you want to put your uh, cup in. So again, don't just keep on reaming. Take it off, see how much you want to ream more. And that's it. So we are on the floor now. Already. And that's, I think that's where we are. That's where we need to be. That's our cavity. So about 20 degrees anti-version, about 45 inclination there. That's it. Okay, uh, Mr. Deeps, it's, it's like a gun, right? You hold yeah. it like a gun. You can't yeah. be wobbly all over and you will yeah. miss you. See how stable his hands were, right? It was like a, just a gun. Come on. It, especially at the end when you are dreaming. You can't do wobbly all over the place. You just have to come on. Look at how much feelings you have. Think about it. It's like, as you said, three dimensional you're thinking. So it's very scary. Very scary. Very scary. Yeah. Generally, the space is very less. So, Mr. Dumber, you should not be from the yeah, just take it. Many times the space is very less. So, yeah, then you can manipulate it outside, but don't manipulate it while on the floor. So take it off and then you can manipulate it like that. Yeah, I know the soft tissues are quite tight sometimes. It's better to release uh, your tissues, uh, your rectus femoris from the front. If it is quite tight, then remove the labrum. Labrum you have to remove anyway. Yeah? Even the rectus femoris you can release so that the tissues fall to the front. That's what I said in the beginning. Exposure is the key. If you can see all around nicely, then you're done. So what size was this? Sir, where one do you put your... Sorry? Where one do you expect this? Livers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anterior one goes uh, anterior inferiorly. Yeah? Anterior posterior. Sorry, no, yeah, anterior. There. Yeah. So it goes in the notch over there. Yeah? Anterior inferior. And the posterior one goes posterior inferior. There. Thank you.
You have broken this. Yeah. yeah, because you maybe you are overread and maybe you have not exposed it a bit more, taking off the um, rectus families. Then that will sort of give you a bit more levy. Otherwise, sometimes the hook is, is so sharp that you are here, and this tends to penetrate through here. Yeah, so especially in the porotic bones, that can happen. So the key is that you uh, take off your soft tissues there so that the tension on the reamer doesn't push it inside. So you mean rectus femoris starts to be released liberally? Yeah. yeah. It's not going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what size was our last? 52. Yeah. Okay, so that's a 52. Do we have? Uh, this is 50. Mm -hmm. This is 50. Do we have 52 shell? No, that uh, that's the uh, insert shell. Now, there is one more thing here, whether you are using a cemented or uncemented, yeah? With the trident hemispheric cup, I usually under ream by, no, yeah, under ream by one. Okay, so you will have odd size reamers. So trident uncemented cup, under ream by one size to the cup size. With the cemented, you have to over ream by two to get a good cement mantle around it. Some people even over ream by four uh, or three, whatever is your choice, it's up to you. Okay. So if, if I was doing uncemented, uh, yeah. So then we will hit it in the same direction. Is the hammer here? Hammer over under. So make sure you are in the same direction, no soft tissues are in between uh, for uh, uncemented. If there is any soft tissue between your bone and this, you will not have a good fix. It, you will end up loose, take it out, then tear out, then wash it, then go again. So it's better to make sure in the first instance there is no labrum coming in between, no soft tissues in between. It's nice and dry and then uh, you are direction as you have planned with your last seamer so a little bit overhang at the posterior superior and inferiorly in the direction of TAL so I think and that was our direction so again one thing you have to make sure hold it solidly usually I hold the cup I ask my assistant to do the handle so holding is very important in the direction. Okay. Yeah. 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 Saw bone is not the same uh, because in the natural bone there is a bit of compression, bit of pliance. But saw bone is. Uh, yeah. So, but this is just a demonstration. You don't have to have like, full fixity. So it seems okay. Yeah. Even with a saw bone, that's surprising. But okay, then you put your shell. Uh, again, uh, depends what kind of shell you're using. If you're uh, using a poly or if you're using a ceramic, uh, in the trident poly, usually there are dents and ridges, so you have to align them properly where to put it. And if you're using a 10 degree poly, then the direction of the 10 degree has to be according to where your cup is. If you think you're too antiverted or too retroverted, you can change the 10 degree to compensate for your cup malorientation. But otherwise, normally it will be posterior superior. Sir, so the screws, uh, how many screws the final was, say, 47? Yeah. 47 was the final Okay. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. So when you do the trial, do you put it fully inside and then get satisfied? Yes, it is For uncemented, I don't do any trials. Uncemented. You directly open the cup and yeah. Because if you do trial, yeah. you are making your cup expanded yeah. and then your original cup when it comes in, it won't hold. Yes, trial, yeah. but I'm just saying that if you're, if you're thinking of 48 cup, try over the 46. Don't do 48. But 46 will not hold, sir. No, but it just give you an idea. It's not going to hold it, but it will give you an idea whether you are able to insert it or not. Is it too loose? No. But generally what happens with 46 is it can just go in and you can move it. 48, if you think you've got peripheral stiffides, then you need to be... If you, if you think of 48 and you're struggling with the 46, that means you need to do something about it. I don't know if I am right or wrong. I fold it partially. I don't enter the cup entirely. I just thought of I don't know what I didn't know what to do. I just put the cup, try it up somewhat deep, not to be in a down section, and see if there is some kind of fold or not. And then I open the cup. At times I have seen it from the diameter. I don't know how much dependable those screws are, but things went down well, so. Yeah. If it is loose, uh, it's not well fixed, then you can put uh, screws. When you put screws, minimum two screws, ideally three. Never put one screw, otherwise it will toggle on that screw. Sir, do you back up on the screws as well? Sorry? The screws are dependable? Dependable, yes. In the screws that you can ask the patient to give it. Oh yeah. You have to achieve fixity. Usually if your two, three screws are okay, then you can be a full weight. Normally, I don't use screws. Only rarely when I find it's not fitting well, then I use screws. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Fifty-two. Ten degree elevator trials. Oh, so this is not the same size. So it has to be fifty-two size by thirty-two. If you think you're going to rely on your screws for your secondary stability, you need to do something about it. You can't rely just to speak to your screws for your Just on the screws, then my screw will come to the cup. Yeah. Then, cup has to be the at least the same diameter, not undersized. Not undersized. Yeah. Because if you're undersizing your cup and then relying on your screws, then so you have to rely primarily stability on your cup. And then you can think of oh, this. You can use the color. So, okay. so this is 10 degree. You can see that's elevated on one side. It's not fully hemispheric. Yeah? So this is 10 degree uh, up the margin. So if you think your cup is less antibody, yeah, sorry, this is elevated, yeah? you can see that. This is posterior screw This is more posterior So this is 10 degree. So if your cup is more retroverted, if it was this way, then I'll put it posterior. If it is more antiverted, you can put it here. But normally this will be posterior superior because dislocations mostly happen through posterior superior part. So this gives you additional 10 degree of support. So, so then you put this and bring it in, whatever size. Okay. Uh, so this was uncemented. Then if you're using cemented, after you prepared it, you use your uh, cementing uh, techniques, uh, basically what you'll be seeing in the femur as well. So same cementing technique uh, for the cup as well. So clear out all the debris, pulse lavage. If you use hydrogen peroxide, use hydrogen peroxide. It should be nice and dry bone looking there. Then I would put a swab in so that it can keep on soaking any bleeding that happens till the cement comes in. So once the cement is prepared, the time to put the cement is in is not immediate. You have to wait for it a little bit so that it becomes uh, uh, the consistency 
um, I would say if, when it becomes non-sticky, there's the time to put it. But it should be nicely malleable. Don't wait too long. That's important as well. So take off the swab, uh, put the cement block in, and use a pressurizer. So with the pressurizer, uh, you uh, pressurize the cement in. Usually, if I do cemented cup, I'll make three holes in the uh, astabulum beforehand. So you can make more holes as well. It's not just three holes, but do minimum three holes. You can do more or all around wherever your bone stock is available. Yeah. And the cement will go in those holes and kind of act like a screw is holding. So aim is to have a three-dimensional hole all over. So then push your uh, cement in, uh, clear out all the excess cement from the margin, then bring the cup in, and uh, the, it usually has a handle in it. Again, it depends if you're using contemporary cup, what kind of cup you're using. Uh, with a contemporary cup, there is a, uh, on the posterior side, yeah. Yeah, do we have a cup? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is a contemporary cup. And this has already been cut uh, from there. Uh, in the contemporary, this, they have this flange. So you can leave two millimeter of uh, flange all around so that the cement doesn't protrude or come out. And that will help with the pressurization of the cement. So, so this is already cut. Uh, uh, this is in fit. Okay. So this is a margin you can see compared to the rest of it. This part is more important. So this part will be posterior superior. So that's how you load it into it. Yeah. So sometimes people load it like that, which is not good because then this becomes anterior inferior. Yeah. It doesn't give the posterior superior support. So depending on the side, you orient it like that and then put these hooks on. So once you once the cement is malleable, you clear the margin, then go in, in the direction you want to go. And uh, you can push it with a head or something like that. Again, don't try to go too superior. You have to give inferior pressure. The direction wise, this is a rough guide. Sometimes I say it's a misguide because your pelvis is not vertical, the pelvis is not square, it's orientated. So although you are relying on the real life dimensions here, vertical will give you 45 and anti-version will give you 15, 20, whatever you want. This handle gives you anti-version. Yeah? Uh, but because of pelvic tilt, pelvic obliquity, um, it can be sometimes misguided. So rely on your inner landmarks, basically. The TAL, the margin that you have, rely on those. Okay. Yeah. Let me show you what side of it is so you can see the cup. Only you can see the side is Yeah, I don't rely on the sides, I just orientate it there and always make sure it is, sometimes it can be opposite, so, yeah. This side is superior, this side is superior, this one. Yeah. The elevated level, eh? This one is the next one. This is clear, it's like this. Join it. Join it. So that's the cement. <laughs> The pressurizer there, yes. Uh, you said that uh, you move on with the pressurizer superior. Okay, agree. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, do you change the inclination or it has to be in the direction? No, no. Keep your direction exactly where you put it. Don't shake. 
if you shake, then your cement mantle will be loose. So while pressurizing, whatever pressure, yeah. suppose that device yeah. pressure, yeah. sir, yeah. Sir, sir, this you have to keep in the uh, 40 degree, 45 degree inclination and uh, 50 degree interversion or you... No, 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 that, 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 that orientation is just the rough orientation. This is not going to affect your... Uh, orientation. Your handle yeah. on the left hand is going yeah. to affect that. Okay. So, so you, you your left hand stable. Yeah. This is just pressurization so that it doesn't come out and it's inside when the cement is cured. Uh, do you want my assistant to press it this way at 45 degree or slightly vertical press so that I can no, no, go in the direction of the cup. You want 45 degree direction of the cup. Okay. So this is a hard one to pressurize. <laughs> So basically, once you put your cement in, this is a uh, sort of pressurizer you'll get. I will normally make it a little bit wet so the cement doesn't get stuck on it, and then pressurize. Uh, again, uh, pressurization uh, in the similar sort of orientation where you want your cup to go. Uh, it's a rough sort of thing. You're not actually creating the full cup cavity. There will be actually much more cement uh, there uh, when you pressurize it but do as much as you can and then clear away inevitably some cement will come out of the margin so clear away that and then put your cup do you put the cement on the back side of the cup also? no okay, there's enough grooves on the back of the cup if you see the cup enough grooves and beads over there to go into the side so when you cut this how much margin do you leave? you can leave a couple of millimeters Usually, I go to the holes. There are holes in there, yeah? That hole itself is... Okay. But if you want to leave more, then you have to actually over in by two, over in by four, if you want to leave more of that. Otherwise, you may get stuck. It's not going in and you're pushing and then you're, you're not pressurizing the cement. So, So, same orientation, <coughs> your anti-version, your inclination. Normally, you 45, I would do it like that, 10 degree, a little bit inclined towards me, so that our uh, inclination actually becomes less than 45, or at least compensates for some of the tilt. You'll still have a margin of error of 5 to 10 degrees. So, so somebody is pressing there and once you are sort of okay in the position this is where I want it just press it and just lift it don't let it change no 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 before that, before that. yeah once it's just firm enough just take it out because otherwise you won't be able to clear the margins take out the cement if it's already set Set. Yeah. You don't play around yeah. So once that is there, then your assistant can just keep it pressurized with that and you can clear the cement around. Yeah. And just keep it till the cement is. You can also use some water lavage when it's curing to clear everything all the debris. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a different pathology altogether. So basic principles for doing this will remain the same, but you have to plan your orientation before. If you have any deformity in the back and it's fixed deformity, then you have to add or subtract your inclination before. If my pelvis is tilted like that, yeah, so my cup is open. Even if it was 40 degree, for this hip it's open. So I would try to close it to 30 degree. Most of the hands conditions I have been like this. African patient there has a high number of the So the patient who has a high number of the patient who And the patient who has a reverse of the patient who has a reverse of the patient. Yes. 
so early in the hack spot cases, you mostly decrease the anti Yeah, most, most of the patients are like this. You can't do it like that. You can't do it like that. You can't do it like that. It's always difficult for the surgeon or people to decrease the activation. We always go all on the safer side. We generally tend to increase the activation. Decrease the activation. You have to take a leap of faith if your activation is pelvic. You can't do it like that. I have a very, very nice video. I will show it to you. I have actually uh, taken a pen and changed the uh, position. And it will show how the head is being exposed posteriorly and anteriorly in different positions. It really, it really matters. If we have a lecture, is it yours? Yes. Mine is on. No, not mine. Mine is on like, senator candidates. <laughs> This is a lecture with Pelvic Public. Yeah. They can use it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.